Hello again, I'm Jonathan. This is The Piano Lesson. And uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, how scales and chords work together, how they're both sides of the same coin. And whenever we think of a chord, we should think of a corresponding scale. And conversely, whenever we think of a scale, we should also think of the chords th that, are, are that the scale gives rise to. And that way you're not learning separate things. You know, it's one and the same thing. That If you're going to learn something, um, you, you want to learn it, I'll use the word, in a holistic manner, all right? It's not just by rote and, and piecemeal. So here's a, so here's a, a, quick, a quick example of, of what we're talking about. Um, a C chord. All right, what's a C chord? Well, I, you know, C, E, G, fine, okay. And they're gonna have to get rid of that pen because it's not working. But that's that's our that's our C E G. Okay, that's our C chord. So what? Okay, how does it function to make music? Well, there's three different ways that it could typically function to make music. It could be the one chord in the key of C. It could be the four chord, all right, in the key of F. Or uh, excuse me, it could be the five the five chord in the key of uh, uh, of F, and the uh, four chord in the key of G. Well, how does that work? Okay, I'll, some of you might already know this, but for those who don't, I'll show you. Uh, typically, the, those are the we're talking about the primary chords in a key. So. In the key of in the key of C, we'll just write make my C C chord here. Okay, C D E F G A B C. Those are the notes of the C major scale, and I'm moving in parallel up the scale and using diatonic chords. Dia meaning through, tonic meaning the notes. I'm going through the notes of, of the scale. Uh, here's the F major scale, uh, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, there's your C chord, okay, uh, F, G, A, uh, sorry, A, B flat, and then there's your, there's your C, there's your, that's a, that's a, Major tetrachord group C D E F. That's a major tetrachord group. Okay, and uh, if you want to, the last four notes of the G scale, G, uh, the last four notes of the C scale, G A B C. All right, that's that's our tetrachord group. Uh, G A B C D E F sharp G. All right. D, E, F sharp, G, that's another tetrachord, okay? So in the, key of, in the key of G, if I go down an octave, let's say, G, A, B flat, C, there's my C chord again. All right, so that C chord can do three different jobs. And please note how these scales are constructed. The F scale, right, is... Uh, uh, and, and the G scale share tetrachords with the C scale. So the, the first four notes of the C scale are the last four notes of the F scale. And the last four notes of the C scale are the first four notes of the G scale. G, G A, B, C, D, uh, E, uh, excuse me. Huh. C, D, E, F sharp, G, right? Uh, C, D, E, F. But they, they go together, okay? There's, they go together, uh, they, they share tetrachords. And the chord is kind of like the note in a jigsaw puzzle. So it's, it's like, you know, you have to know how does it function in music. Now, depending on the scale that you're using, right, that's going to change the chords that you will in, 
likely encounter, the, the, the chords that, that are uh, an outgrowth of that scale. So if, if, I took, if I took another scale, and again, we're talking about, we're talking about uh, asymmetrical, asymmetrical scales. So scales that um, are not, don't have the same interval go, all going all the way up. For instance, the chromatic scale, which is used, which uses only half steps, or the whole tone scale, which is, uses only whole steps. Now, let, let's, I'll take a little side uh, sidebar here and say, if we made a scale using the notes, using a, if we made chords using the notes of a symmetrical scale, well, the chord type would be consistent throughout. For instance, C major, C sharp major, D major, E flat, F, F major, they're all consistent. It doesn't matter what kind of chord I start on. Minor, 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 right? Or diminish, 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 diminish. They're all the same going up because, again, the intervals are the same. With a whole tone scale, if you skip notes, you get an augmented chord, and that augmented chord is consistent all the way up the scale. So those are not typically scales that we make music with as such. We use the asymmetrical scales. And if you haven't seen my lesson on tetrachords, you, you, I'll try to review some of it here, but please note that there's only four different types of tetrachords, right? There's, there's major, okay, minor, Phrygian, and harmonic, right? So those four tetrachord groups, um, major, C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F. C, D, E flat, F. So you change one note to E flat. All right. Uh, Phrygian, C, D flat, E flat, F. C, D flat, E flat, F. And then the harmonic, C, D flat, E natural, F. C, D flat, E natural, F. So the outer notes stay the, uh, stay the same. Those, those are the constants. Those are constant, right? And the middle notes, those are the variables, right? Those are the variables that we have in there. So what's in it for you? Like, how is that going to help, help you? Well, first of all, you, most of the scales that we make can be made with any of those tetrachord groups. A major scale, a major scale is two major tetrachords. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, those are two major tetrachords. C, the minor scales uh, have the lower tetrachord in common. They're all minor tetrachords on the, the low one. And then the upper one, depending on the scale you want, changes. So uh, natural minor, harmonic minor, melodic minor depending on the function. The, uh, the natural minor scale is called natural because it uses the same key signature as its relative ma uh, major, and there are no modifications made. There are no accidentals. The other two are called artificial scales. And the one artificial scale that we typically refer to when we're playing in a minor key is the harmonic minor. So harmonic minor, major plus the harmonic, right? And our half steps, our half steps are in between C and D flat and E and F. This is the only tetrachord type that has two half steps in it. The rest one half step there, one half step there, and one half step there. So this is between three and four, this is between one and two, and this is, excuse me, this is between <laughs> three and four, this is between two and three, and this is between one and two. And here we have half steps between one and two and three and four. The middle interval is what we call an augmented second, right? 
Um, and we need we need that uh, we need that raised seventh that raised seventh so that we get a major chord so that the primary chord the, the dominant chord is always major one four one five one that's C major uh, C minor one four one five one the five is always G major whether it's whether it's uh, uh, a major key or minor key and that's important for people to understand and minor keys are a little bit slippery because we only invoke that sharp seven when we want the dominant chord otherwise we're likely using notes of the natural minor scale okay um, and uh, if we're not doing that then we may be using the notes of the melodic minor scale for melodies right um, let me give you an example of I'll go back to this but let me give you an example of how uh, you might use knowledge of tetrachords to make other scales that are seemingly more complex people have a real hard time with diminished scales diminished scales are important to understand uh, diminished scale can be understood as two minor tetrachord C D E flat F and then I'll just call it F sharp for now G sharp A B okay those are our two tetrachords and those tetrachords the tetrachords we're talking about are what we call disjunct okay uh, meaning that they're not overlapping okay some scales have overlapping notes but C D E flat F F sharp G sharp A B and that alternates um, whole step half step whole step half step whole step half step whole uh, whole step and then we'll end on the C which is the half step it actually has an extra note right it's it's one two three four five six seven eight nine we've kind of packed nine notes within the octave um, there's a little more to it than that but we'll leave it at that if you were to skip notes in the scale C E flat let's call it G flat instead of F sharp you would get a series of diminished chords and they would all be the same going up and down and even if, if I make a seventh chord that's true as well right that's true as well so as a musician you really need to know not only how to form scales and break them down into tetrachord groups it make, makes it easier but also how to derive your chords from the scale all right so when you're playing music you have more of a let's use the word holistic idea of what you're doing okay you're not just memorizing chords and hoping you remember them right because if you if it, there's really no distinction it's really just semantics again it's really just both sides of the of the same coin um, likewise again with the with the whole tone scales having these augmented chords going up C E G sharp D F sharp A sharp E G sharp B sharp any and just just for music reading just a re little review okay any any triad that you see you don't even have to know you don't have to have a clef it's always spaced in thirds okay so it's let's just say it's F F A C or F A flat C or uh, F A flat C sharp let's say I mean whatever but that I mean that's that's how you make triads and that's why sometimes we need to use double sharps and and double flats now um, let's let's talk about a tune and how and how you might use something like this so um, So uh, there's a tune, uh, There'll Never Be Another You. I'm picking that because there's a, it starts with a scale. And it's an E flat. Five, E flat. Now I could choose to harmonize that melody rather than simply. And 
it actually goes to the relative minor too, which is good application for, for the minor chords. But I could I could choose to harmonize just just going just using diatonic chords from E flat major the first melody notes B flat and that's probably not an E flat chord it's probably B flat seven um, and then here's my now that's basically a major chord E flat major. But the melody is the six. For you Barry Harris fans that like like your, he has he has his own scale uh, ideas. Um, he calls calls them diminished six scales. That's this is direct application of how you might use that. So E flat six, then uh, going up the scale, you could choose to use the dominant chord from the scale, or you could go in order totally diatonic but it sounds a bit uh, it sounds a little too pure okay or you could take from the diminished scales take from the diminished the 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 non chord tones what did I do there E flat six F sharp diminished E flat six so that's another possibility that you could do. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so that's E flat six, F diminished E flat six in first version. You could still, F, you could still call it F diminished if you want. It's basically this. So it's the E flat six chord done in three inversions, and then the diminished chord. And then and then you maybe uh, So anytime I'm playing a note that's not E flat G or C. I'm using a diminished chord. Um, and I I kind of lied because <laughs> because I, I, I guess it's it's the C. I play using I'm using the major chord on six. on to the the minor key so two things first of all um, you can harmonize your tunes you can flesh them out okay using as opposed to I hear that all the time from pianists and look we, we you're not playing the flute, so you, you got to have all, all these notes to grab in your hand. How do, who started all that stuff? Well, in terms of jazz, jazz history, um, while Barry Harris does talk a lot about that uh, online, before Barry was uh, George Shearing, and before George Shearing was a guy named Milt Buckner, whom uh, Shearing accredits with... Uh, kind of getting that idea. And there's one other element to what Shearing did, which is that he doubled the melody note and he put harmonies in between there. So you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doubling the melody E flat six um, diminished six diminished six and then going up to the B flat also a six and then diminished six diminished you could 
or, or there are opportunities just to use diatonic harmony. Um, I I don't have to use the diminished necessarily. I could just I could just do that, possibly. Uh, but that adds more tension. So this is how you apply your knowledge of diatonic harmony. Uh, you learn your scales, you learn the chords from the scale, and then you can also start to add coloration. So you can steal from other scales, okay? You know, the, the, the diminished scale, right, we, we have, we, we had you, but you can steal diminished chords, which are used as, as passing chords, typically chromatic passing chords. But you're using them, This and this is a bit of a contradiction in a sense, okay? We're using chromatic harmony in the context of a diatonic scale, because the melody notes, um, all those notes are in the key, okay? But we're, we're not just playing the, the uh, diatonic harmonies E flat major seven, F minor seven, G minor seven, A flat major seven, B flat seven. We're not just doing that. C minor seven, um, half diminished, right? We're not necessarily doing that. We're we're interjecting, alternating. And likewise, when you improvise, right? I mean, who's to stop you from? You know, doing that kind of a thing when you're in, when you're improvising. Right. And I'm just sort of decorating those notes. So, whatever you do in the left hand, whatever you're doing in the left hand. Even even comping, even comping in the left hand, right? You can still use that those exact same notes as material for the right hand as you're as you're playing. I mean, after all, that's why chords sound good with the melody because they're essentially the same notes. Okay, um, but this is the this is the fabric. This is the these are the raw materials that you make music from. Okay, and the, the better you know them, uh, the easier it is to play. And the more you understand the context of a chord, uh, the more confident you'll be, and uh, the less fragile you know your 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 playing will be because you, you, it'll it'll just become second nature. Um, but, but it is understanding how the chords, the context of the chords, how they fit hand in glove with whatever scale you're using. Typically, if you're playing in a major key, it's a major scale, or if you're playing in a minor key, it's a minor scale. Um, but again, the minor scale, as we discussed, has a kind of a, a caveat to it, um, because uh, if you are com completely literal with the harmonic minor scale, like, like A harmonic minor, Right. If I'm going up the scale, the three chord would be augmented. Do I really want the three chord as an augmented chord? I, I don't. Probably not. I mean, I, I prob probably, I probably want it as a major chord. You know, ordinarily, right? But it's it's minor tetrachord below and then above. Again, it's ma major for the melodic minor. Uh, Phrygian for the uh, natural minor and harmonic for the harmonic minor. When do you hear melodic minor scales? Um, well, the you remember the Mozart. So he does. <laughs> okay, then he does. Uh, 
does. Now he does. Well, listen. D minor. That's melodic minor. And it goes to the relative major, F major. If he didn't use a melodic minor, if he used, say, natural minor, it would, would, it would sound odd. It doesn't resolve properly. Or if he goes harmonic, that's pretty funky. It's melodic. <laughs> okay. Mozart's Sonata in C major, um, if you want to look it up. I really don't play it that well, but uh, I do know enough that that's a great example for your um, for the use of your melodic minor scales. Right. So uh, we're coming to a close here. I uh, hope I didn't give you guys too much information, but as always, you know, please write in and and uh, let me know your reactions. Um, is it too much information? Is it too little? Is it too confusing? Or is it not confusing enough? Would you like something more confusing? I could always make it more confusing. Um, if you have a question, um, if you have something that you particularly liked, that would be great to know as well. So um, until we meet again uh, next time, um, keep practicing. Got to practice every day. Uh, six days a week is good. You know, to really be good, I mean, I. I don't want to break this to you, but to really be good, you got to spend at least three to four hours on the keyboard every day. It's just, you know, everybody has done that at one point in their life or another. I mean, maybe not for the rest of your life, but there's a certain period of your life, a certain period of my life I spent at the keyboard, maybe from the time I was 12 to the time I was, I don't know, 22, let's say, but a minimum of three to four hours of the keyboard. And... A lot of times during the summers, you could easily spend six hours, you know. Um, we're not trumpet players where we're going to blow out our lips or something. So we might get hemorrhoids, but, you know, it's occupational hazard. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. Uh, good to see you, and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Jonathan Nito. This is The Piano Lesson. So long.